As business owners, entrepreneurs, family men, it's difficult for us to find the time to put together projects like these. Even though it's something we really want to do, unfortunately, taking care of the things we have to take care of comes first. However, because of viewer support for people like you, we're able to continue doing this. Please consider joining our Patreon and supporting the Burn and Return podcast. That was the acid trip. (laughs) (laughs) You're listening to Burn and Return, a weekly one-hour podcast covering news from the agricultural and turf grass industries. A la 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 bamba. A la 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 bamba. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) <laughs> well, Richie Valens to kick the show off for Cinco de Mayo. Uh, man, I was a big fan of that song when I was a kid. I really was. Um, and man, Did you really a think story between him and uh, Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper? Yeah, the Big Bopper. Man, it's a terrible story. Yeah, yeah February third, nineteen fifty nine. The day music died. Yeah, the day music died. Uh, I just thought I, he was Lou Diamond Phillips for the longest time. <laughs> But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, how many times did you watch that movie as a kid? Oh, a lot. A yeah, lot. me too. Me too. I don't know why. I, maybe because it was on TV all the time. There wasn't a lot of movies on TV. I can't remember why, but I watched the holy shit out of it often. And, uh, man, it's, it's funny. It's, it's funny. It was good. It's good. I, and I, to this day, I still love that song. Happy Cinco de Mayo, everyone. Also, um, this is our hundredth episode. Uh, if you were tuning in, this is, and uh, if you've been here since the beginning, welcome aboard the Soul Train. We have now done one hundred of these. It took us three years to do it, but we did it, and, uh, <laughs> and we're here. We're queer, and uh, the boy, old college try. <laughs> that's right. That is right. Hey, what, uh, you know what? You know what? This that's a good segue from our pre-show. You know, we talked a lot about it, and uh, if you don't know how to get on that www.patreon.com uh, forward slash burn and return you can always check out the free show it is the safest space in all of uh long care youtube by far <laughs> and uh on that note of the Completely old college correct. try and our you know absolutely our pre-show topic remember always don't drop acid take it past fail <laughs> if you if you definitely don't do a 10 strip at one time <laughs> Unless you're okay with involuntary three day commitments, then I wouldn't know anything about. <laughs> She's got a really, really uh, comfy sleeping bag already laid out on the floor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, and boy, they cinch it down on you too to make sure your arms are not uh, <laughs> not mobile. Uh, and that's that's for the three days that you trip, and then the three day involuntary. It, it, trust, you're you're signing away a week of your life. Okay, just know that it's it's a seven days of not a good time anyway welcome to our 100th episode if you're uh you can you can always check us out on all your favorite uh podcast apps spotify whatever pod pod bean who knows whatever just we're not on pod bean anymore no 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 remember pod bean is oh yeah that's uh, right is to matt martin what matt what uh, matt martin is to enterprise rent a car right you guys (laughs) broke up it's over we did we did um Listen here, Enterprise. Listen here. We one yeah, day a, we will settle this score. Maybe we should take an entire episode and call Enterprise to try to get an answer on why Matt Martin still cannot rent a car with Enterprise. I want someone else to do it just to see the hilarity of it. That you say, <laughs> Hey, I need to add a driver. And then when you add me, in the way the tone changes to whoever is trying to add it, and they're like, okay, yeah, no problem. I'll help you with that. All right, what's this? Okay, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, yeah, we have a problem. <laughs> I'm like, what, what happened? You were so helpful and friendly. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm going to need you to call corporate at this number. And uh, I, think, I think it would actually make for good content because you will hear how everyone's voice changes in an instant i don't know what they have in the computer when you input my name and social security number 
but apparently it is bad enough that even the most joyful, jovial people act like they saw the devil. Uh, so it is, I don't know, maybe they have, they have something in there. It's, it's, it's scary. Tell uh, me no, man. Anyway. You didn't actually stamp, stomp the manlet, did you? You didn't actually no. stomp him, did you? No, no. In fact, I, mm. I said touche, and I, I actually said that out loud <laughs> because he did make me go stand outside in the middle of a massive thunderstorm with, like, oh, rainfall at four inches an hour. I mean, it was nasty. I, said, I was legit nervous. I was going to get struck by lightning. Deservedly, probably, God. too, for what I said. But, uh, <laughs> no, I I. I Totally chalked it up as that. Yep, I probably deserve that, and I, I went on out. But uh, yeah, it was it was a thing. It was definitely a thing. Every, everything else though is uh, uh, no. Yeah, you see, uh, my God, are people that sensitive, Matt? Well, uh, apparently, when you insinuate that they have to sniff testicles all day because they're just not quite tall enough to live otherwise, and then. Apparently they do get sensitive about that, but I, I thought it was creative. Anyway, we're going to have a special show today. Um, it is, it is, uh, our special show is that we're, we're going to riff a little bit on some of our historical moments. And, uh, one of the things that, that we have in store for you is everybody's favorite is Joe knows turf. And so we thought we would do an extended segment. Uh, well, hell, we'll just call it, <laughs> we're going to call it a, a Joe, a Joe still doesn't know turf show. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> Joe doesn't know shit show as a matter of fact. And, uh, we thought, we thought we'll just have fun with it. So, uh, with that, I got, do we, do we go ahead and kick this off with the Joe knows turf sounder? Just, just to get it out of the way. It's like, what do you call it? The Miranda rights. We can't, we can't be too critical until we read everyone their Miranda rights. You sign this waiver. <laughs> Because, because Joe, Joe knows <laughs> TJ, I did not drive my car in a, a rental into a lake. I just I made a comment to the guy behind the desk who was exceptionally short. <laughs> he was possibly five foot tall. About uh, you know, his face was the same eye level as a real man's <laughs> testicles. That's all. Anyway, Demay, what do you have in store for us today? Well, you know, uh, this was not part of our original show uh, back in uh, 2021 when we started up. Burner returned. Uh, this was added, you know, somewhere along the way. And uh, it was just because we couldn't help ourselves. So uh, some of these will be some usual suspects. There's a couple of new ones in here, too. But I uh, wanted to go through this. And, and as we go through, we can always we can riff on, you know, the good times, the bad times, the you know, the death threats from Spencer, um, Justin calling in and telling Matt to go fuck himself, only be told uh, <laughs> that Matt wasn't going to do that. Um, and in fact, I forgot about Justin. Justin. I completely forgot about Justin. Ah, there's a lot of stuff I've, I forgot about just trying to remember a hundred episodes. And uh, it has been wow. uh, Justin's Justin's the reason why we have this sounder. Time's up. It's over. <laughs> i don't know what episode that is solid in this show i don't know where <laughs> what episode that is i think that might be a a, a thirsty thursday but somebody yeah. needs to go find that it was so a, we can watch that towards boy, the that was the a thirsty thursday call-in show oh, yeah, and that was, that was so just mad that, that was an epic uh <laughs> And the reason why I remember it is because I kind of lost my shit that show as well. You can find that episode on the end of it. You can find that episode <laughs> by going to goaheadcowboy.com. <laughs> it'll it'll take you need... right there. You know, one of the things we need to do for episode 101 and beyond is we need a link tree of all the fucking shit that we own because we own a it, lot of real estate. I, I think we, <laughs> we just need a Wikipedia at this point, like our we own do. Wiki. There's so many, <laughs> we do. There's, there's so much shit to, to thumb through. And like, uh, you know, Ray, I, I was thinking about Sheila. By the way, for those of you joining at 100th episode, Sheila doesn't exist. Ray got rear-ended one time, uh, <laughs> totally destroyed his green smeller, and I made up the story on the spot how the lady who hit him was named Sheila. She'd offered him sexual favors, all this and that. Um, but no, today or uh, yesterday, I was walking uh, 
through the neighborhood and the, somebody had a um a Krispy Kreme sign, you know, the hot donuts now. And I thought, man, we should get that for for Sheila because every time she wants her donut glazed, Ray, she just slips the sign on. It'd be perfect. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, when you walk through the door mm-hmm. and you go by that machine, you could be that machine, mm-hmm. Ray. Gosh. Anyway. You uh, know it. You know it, Ryan. <laughs> I, I do. I do. Turn that glaze into a cream field, my my man. All right. So uh, <laughs> we're gonna watch somebody new on this first one. We've talked about oh, these it, it's a large uh multinational corporation, uh the BMF within the industry. We've never actually done anything on these guys, but they have put out a product that I want to get your takes on. So first we have a commercial that introduces it. Then we have a YouTube video that explains how they want you to use it. And then finally we have the product information and the label that we can go through. So let's kick it off with the commercial J pink from Scott's miracle bro. I thought water would help with these dry spots. That's lawn disease, but Scott's healthy plus will cure it. Lawn disease been going around. So, like, other people have it, and it's not... Pick up a bag of the new Scott's Turf Builder Healthy Plus Lawn Food today. Feed your lawn. Feed it. There's Scott like telling you that... You, you like it? I love it. I watch would, it again? I would hang it. Yes. Let's watch it again. I think, I think she... They had a little innuendo there at the end, if I, if I caught that correctly. <laughs> I thought water would help with dry spots. That's lawn disease. But Scott's Healthy Plus will cure it. Lawn disease? Been going around. So, like, other people have it, and it's not... Pick up a bag of the new Scott's Turf Builder Healthy Plus Lawn Food today. Feed you lawn. Feed it. Were they making a STD in innuendo there? Yeah, yep. she gets around <laughs> like a record. Wow. wow. What's that, uh... What's, look what's, look what's at that this old Viking of a band that they picked here for Scott. I mean... I think he's got lifters on. He's not that tall. There's no way. Well, and uh, why She's really is short. Uh, well, uh, why is he propositioning a Filipino? <laughs> it's AAPI <laughs> month, right? He Everybody's was, he was doing in, it. <laughs> he was he was in the navy. It was what everybody was doing back then. All right, so here's the situation. If you're on audio only, um, Honey, there's a lawn, and and it looks like um, spots. You know, it could be disease, could be dry spots. They I do look know. like dry spots, actually. Okay, and she's watering, and then Scott tells her, "Hey, no, 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 that's actually lawn disease. Go ahead and put down this uh, Scott's Healthy Plus lawn food." All right, so let's go ahead and click the YouTube video now, and let's watch what Scott tells us uh, this is all about. Oh, you got to turn them. This is just audio. Two-in-one fungicide and fertilizer. Disease defense disease prevents and controls 27 types of lawn disease. Root strength strengthens root down to the root uh, to help your lawn recover from stress. We have uh, deep greening fees for a thicker, greener lawn. How to use. Number one, prep. If the grass is tall enough to touch the bottom of the spreader, give it a quick cut. The bottom of a spreader? Yeah, it's way too tall. Huh. Fill and set the spreader according to the label. Then apply to your lawn. Then clean up. Sweep it off the driveway, sidewalk, or street back into your lawn. Make sure it settles all in the edges and leaves a nice burn spot. Those are some crispy, clean tennis shoes that guy was wearing, by the way. Water the treated area for 15 to 20 minutes after application. This is, this is easy. They make it so easy. Blade boost technology Blade boost. for a healthier lawn. Blade boost. Blade runner. Uh, well, let's find out what's what are the actives in this product. Surely this is like uh what's it has to be. Let's go. Yeah, just some just some oxyzobin, probably. I mean that That would be my guess too. So it is oxystrobin. Yep. It's a nineteen oh four, I believe. Uh, okay. Go ahead and click this mm-hmm. one. Nineteen oh ten. Nineteen oh ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With his oxystrobin, and you're going to apply this at a rate of three point four three pounds per thousand square feet. So that's about one hundred fifty pounds an acre. So, okay. 
you know, he, here is my question, gentlemen. How do we mm-hmm. feel about homeowners being entrusted to make decisions about whether the brown spots in their lawn are disease, correctly identifying those, and then applying this with a fungicide and fertilizer at the same time? And then I'll, 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 I'll one up you on there, too. So go ahead on that one first. I, I just, I, I would say at, at this point, um, not, I, I would say one out of eight, maybe one out of 10 would be diagnosed correctly. So 90% of this material will be misapplied. That's, that's a fair estimate. I, Ray, I have another think? concern. I have another concern. What would happen if somebody does actually have lung disease, right? And that disease happens to be dollar spot. And they're going to mm. now drench in some azoxystrobin. Mm. Like, I got, I got to wonder about that because I'm not making this up when I say that azoxystrobin has been identified as one of the fungicides known to aggravate dollar spot. Flutilanil or, or Prostar is the other one that's known to do that. You know, those two fungicides stand out. <laughs> As dollar spot uh, aggravators. <laughs> maybe, maybe when I say 90% misapply would be strong, maybe that would also take into account misidentification of diseases and just applying it to the wrong disease, which would still fall under the category of misapplication. But I, I'm, I'm going to say 90%. And I might be a little friendly saying 90%. It could mm-hmm. be upwards of 92, mm-hmm. 93% that's misapplied. What, what would you think, Demay? Oh, I think the higher. I think a lot of what is seen out there that is, uh, viewed as disease more often than not as abiotic. I mean, even yeah. the best pest uh, ID clinics in the country, North Carolina State, uh, Purdue, Rutgers, you'll, you'll see a lot of those samples, better than half of those are typically abiotic, right? So they mm-hmm. don't have a, a pathogen or a causal agent. Mm-hmm. So go ahead and slide down here to azoxystrobin. Keep going, keep going. We need to go down. Prohibitolands, go up, 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 up. Up, up, up to the QOIs. There you go, the stribulant. QOI. So, so when you read across here is oxystrobin heritage, and we talk about how it uh, does. This is from Ohio State's plant pathology department. And if you slide up there in that uh, fifth column, this is talking about its propensity for resistance, right? Concern over mm-hmm. resistance. And if you read that column about strobilarins, of which is oxystrobin is in that family. The concern is high, right? So if we continue to apply this type of fungicide over and over and over again, you know, we do run the risk of causing resistance out there. So again, I'm not quite sure if this is creating a problem or excuse me, creating a solution for a problem that doesn't exist or if, you know, I also wonder too, gentlemen, is if some of the YouTube bullshit has maybe influenced people uh, <laughs> to think that whenever they see something bad on the lawn, that it must be disease, right? And how yeah. often do we see that? Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, because uh, I got to tell you that I'm friends with uh, the plant pathologist at the University of Hawaii Extension Service, and you know what he tells me? What's that? More than 90% of the samples that he's seen over the years have been abiotic or due to a non-fungal issue. So I think the percentage, uh, the percentage is even higher. And then, okay, let me put this what you know, little thought on your head or into your head. Say you do actually have rhizoctonia, Ryan. Mm-hmm. That is a disease that you have, or pythium. Tell me now, would you be applying nitrogen while that disease was active? Would you no. do it, Ryan? I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because I, I, I'm, I'm starting to th- think now, okay, say somebody does have disease, but then they're going to see this bag and they're going to say, oh, it has fungicide in it, but... They 
forgot the part about how too much fertilizer or nitrogen can make the problem worse. I see this a, as being a solution that turns out not to be a solution. Instead, it's a creator of numerous problems. I think a good example of it would be uh, we on Thursday or went well Wednesday on the after show. We watched a video from uh, uh, what's his name, um, Mr. Ferguson, who incorrectly uh, identified a situation in his lawn as rust disease. Right. So I don't know and, what he's uh, saying. And, and you know, immediately reached for the propaganda all to take care of the rust. And uh, but I anyone anyone who's done this for even a, a short amount of time could easily recognize that the the way those lines were so straight that was not uh, that was not a a uh, a function of nature uh, causing causing that it was it was it was not disease it was a a, a mechanical it was a, a failure ap a, a application failure uh, from earlier so yeah this is uh, this is you know again. Are you are you surprised? <laughs> I'm not. I'm know. not. Yeah. 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 So again, I think here the first and uh, larger issue is that we're simplifying, oversimplifying, Matt. To go back to your turf sub radio days, oversimplification uh, simplification is devaluation. And I think mm -hmm. that's what this product is. It's just getting a little too far out over the skis trying to fix everybody's problem with one application and it's just not going to work. So no, unfortunately. All right. With that being said, we're going to jump into a new one. It's somebody we've not watched before. And I don't believe. And, uh, there's some, some spicy takes in this video, uh, about <laughs> some of our favorite topics related to, uh, Biosolids and smokes. Look at that. Look, hey, look at that right there. We are hand mixing biosolids and urea right here, baby. Oh dear. That's not how you that's not how you do it in your plant in Cookville? Nope. 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 Not even once. It's absurd. Not nope. Handmade. It's it's not handmade artisanal shit. I uh, <laughs> no, no, it's not. And uh imagine if they oh. mix pharmaceuticals like this. Hey, I've got to send you a picture, by the way, this week. I bought, and I'm almost sure I bought the last ones, and I will save the last one for you. I bought the last 40 bags of X Green that were three Jesus years and two, two months old in inventory. I bought it. How Jeez. incredible is that? That is wild. I will save wow. the last bag for you. We will bronze it in Louisville. <laughs> Man, that is so funny. <laughs> I got a call this week about, about that product. It's and I was like, dude, what? Oh, <laughs> man. It was, it was another manufacturer, too. It was weird. Jesus. Yeah. All right. Let's watch Homeboys mix this up. We got some on. Yeah. Pause. It looks good enough. Looks like my ramen. <laughs> it's mixed up. Uh, Betty, <laughs> Betty Cracker fertilizer here. You know? All he's got to do is add the canola oil, and we're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's that would see. Be a guy. bad idea with canola oil. Knock the dust out. You killed it, bro. How many mills do you think are on those gloves? Seven. Not, e not enough. Guys, how you doing, Chris Rod? Today we're back in the touched his eyeglasses with it. Of the week. Well, it's not <laughs> technically today's Thursday. I guess midday work week, long care would be Wednesday. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, this is kind of a um, in preparation of some weed control, guys. We're gonna be start talking about. We're gonna be start talking about. We're gonna start talking about. That's a fun one. Actually, revisit. That's As you guys something know, inside my very own lawn, we've got a. I think he. No, 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 let it play, let it play. Uh, but I, I think he, um, something good that we can talk about that he's actually doing. We did not do any pre-emergent this particular February. So uh, we're going to start addressing the quack grass, issue, quack, quack grass issue as the herbicides come in and whether or not we're going to be treating it or option B from our last video if we're just going to continue to mow it out. I've already got the lawn mowed down. I just got through doing that. 
I know you guys get tired of watching my mowing videos. So uh, we took care of that. Today, we're gonna be doing a couple different applications. We're not doing herbicide applications, but this is the start of a continued conversation and effort of how you should be treating your lawn if you have weeds, okay? Uh, what we are putting down today, though. Okay, so this is, is how to treat a lawn if you have weeds. I've got a combination of combination of some twenty one zero zero and okay, by the way, ammonium sulfate. Yeah, I know it made me nervous. Biochar and humic acid. I love humic acid, and I wait. Love this is what biochar. Why? Because we're in the desert, and humichar. You know, in oh the humichar. Okay, okay. Unlike Dubai right now. We like to conserve our water, okay? And the way that we do that is by implementing humic funny. acid into the soil system. And I guarantee you this, quote, unquote, if, I mean, I, I, I want to key phrase it, but it, Mr. Pete Denning over in uh, North Carolina, maybe South Carolina, get your dirt right. If you take care of the soil, if you just focus on the soil, you will always have the greenest lawn on the block. And what I mean by that is by adding... I promise you, your crops. desert soil is nothing like peat soil in the peat mine over there. Uh, like, not even things. remotely similar. Uh, it makes it makes Man, is he missing the mark. He's right totally the missing the mark by okay. adding chimichar? He's going after water holding capacity, which is one of those old wives tales of biochar. But I'm I'm curious. I'm, I want to hear I want to hear what claims he uh, he he regurgitates. Layer within all <sighs> the land ever, especially inside your lawn area. But I stopped taking him seriously it, once he mentioned human char. <laughs> essentially, retention. I'm gonna give him a chance. I, I, so far, I like in this. In the desert guy. environment, guys, and if you're everywhere else, you know when you're adding carbon, which is what biochar is. When you're adding carbon and you're increasing your, your carbon and your CEC levels, and that starts to get technical, I'm gonna keep it dummified. But when you start increasing that carbon, you're always gonna be able to take care of your root systems, you're taking care of the soil, and you're always gonna have the greenest lawn on the block. But um, in cohesion with weed control, as you guys know, uh, we're doing kind of a combo right now. Combo A, where we're possibly gonna be um, mowing out our lawn or mowing down the weeds and pushing the growth of the Bermuda grass, which is why I've got some 2100 ammonium sulfate. If you haven't been fertilizing, keep fertilizing every four to six weeks. All right. I'm due for a fertilizer application. And then, um, <laughs> or, and, or where we spray out all the weeds, the quack grass issue that I have, and we start fresh from scratch. Okay. Until I make that decision on when we're going to do it, which an overseeding process, I can do it really any point in time before the heat of the summer. But pause um, right now. All right. So, Ray, <laughs> tell me in, mm -hmm. in a situation like this, in a desert lawn situation, right? And mm -hmm. we're focused on water retention and we're focused on overall turf health in spite of the fact that we might not be able to use as much water as we want, everything like that. What would you be focusing on at this point, especially this point in the year too, with a lawn that looks like this? I'd be looking actually at the, at the pH. That's where I'd be looking. And by looking at the pH and also looking at any potential sodicity or salinity issues, you will do more for the turf grass than feeding it biochar because biochar does not address what is likely the fundamental issue in this soil because tell me now has old boy applied some kind of a herbicide overdose like say did he get happy and he applied say 20 mils of spectacle instead of two mil. I know that can happen. Did that happen? But, and if it didn't happen, then biochar isn't going to do a damn thing for him other than deplete his bank account. So that, that's, my, that's my thought on it because I would expect to see elemental sulfur. I'd expect to see acids and Yes, he did a good start with the ammonium sulfate, but if your soil is that far off, 
ammonium sulfate is only very temporary at best. Yeah, and all right, so there's one thing, Jay Pink, I sent you here. It he talks about CECs and create, uh, increasing soil CECs. And so I guess he's thinking, you know, I'm desert. Uh, do we have any idea where this guy is? I think he's in Vegas, I think. Uh, in or in a, Vegas. Or Arizona. I, I, no, or Arizona. Arizona it, because says, any, it says Texas yeah. on his thing. Texas. We Texas. were close. Oh, okay. Texas, okay. And uh, and this definitely could be a situation with uh, with sodic soil, right? I mean, that's that that is a big thing. Uh, however, and this is uh, by Texas A and M, but it was actually I mean published through Texas A and M, but um, uh, you know it has the people from University of Wisconsin working on it. And Jay Pink, if you scroll down, keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down, um, keep going a little bit more. Oh, whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, okay, right here, uh, up just a touch more. Just a touch more. There it is. So uh, to gain some perspective on the possibility of effective making use of high CEC of humic acid, we can examine the recommendations of one manufacturer that calls for the addition of two pounds per cubic yard of 80-20 sand peat root zone mix. So two pounds per cubic yard, three pounds of humate for uh, substitution of three pounds of humate for the peat moss. Okay. And so across a cubic yard of soil, two pounds. Uh, that is, that's, that's going to be way higher than what we're typically seeing. Right. Uh, you know, like, uh, I don't know what the rate is on this, but it's, it's probably like 10 pounds per thousand square feet. You've got more than 10 cubic yards of soil in, uh, in a thousand square feet. So, you know, this is a much higher concentration that's having here. Uh, so, uh, you, you are getting, uh, a 0.37 mech increase from humate. <laughs> at a significantly higher concentration that you're going to be applying uh, uh, across your lawn from this product. 0.37 mex. That is statistically zero. Okay. Um, then the other thing we have here is, I, this is one of the things that frustrates me about biochar. And I, I, I will say that of the three of us, I am without a doubt the biggest simp of, of biochar. Uh, this is the link to the article, JPink, but I'm going to clip this and uh and send it to you so you don't have to uh search for it through there uh here comes an image and uh basically so if you added uh by mass one percent of biochar into a loamy sandy soil right so one uh, percent <laughs> again we know a furrow slice of soil across an acre is two million pounds at one percent uh you know so what are you talking about you're talking about 200 pounds across um uh, is, is is that right? Two hundred? No, it's more than that. Two million. Two million. Pounds. Uh, where's where's my my calculator? Where's my calculator? Two million uh, times point oh one. No wait, times point oh yeah point oh one. Uh, that would be twenty thousand pounds across an acre uh, divided by forty three. Uh, uh, uh. uh. Uh huh. Uh okay, so that would be four hundred and fifty-nine pounds an acre. Uh, four hundred fifty-nine pounds per thousand square feet. Um, you are not. You are only increasing water holding capacity by one point seven percent. At four hundred pounds per thousand square feet. What happens is is that this statistic. Now it starts going to hear water holding capacity of unadmitted sandy loam soil sixteen percent is doubled by the addition of nine percent mass by biochar nine percent right so now you know we're we're talking about tons per acre that you're applying of this material right shit shit tons of material a lot of material that you're applying and the the reality is is that you're not doing this in a home lawn setting you're not you're not tilling all this in you're applying it over the top. And so the, the, um, and this is what continues to get regurgitated as like, no, biochar increases water holding capacity of the soil. Well, yeah, but at what rate, if you're applying it at five and pounds per thousand, are you, are you actually doing that? You're, you are, you, you do have now something that is riding along with the nitrogen you're applying that does have a cation exchange capacity or does have an anion exchange capacity depending on the the biomass source and the paralysis temperature and uh and the thing is is that i don't think uh you're getting a lot a lot of transparency on that uh from uh from people like anderson's that that make that and 
And they try to keep it in this gray area of unknowns. And unfortunately, that any sort of uh, positive realizations that can come from biochar are going to be overshadowed by the fact that we continue to hide in these elusive areas with these wild ass claims like, oh, we can increase the water holding capacity. So I'm, I, I say a lot to say is that I, I honestly, God, I don't, I don't blame this guy at all. He's just sucked into the literature. I think, you know, I've definitely been down that road before. He's sucked into the marketing literature, right? And he's using his own uh, 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 logic there to to say, okay, I've got this problem. This product, according to literature, solves problem X. And then if I combine it with product Y, I should theoretically be killing two birds with one stone. He probably does have high pH too, especially if he's in uh, in South Texas, uh, especially like Southwest Texas or something. So at least, yeah, the ammonium sulfate part makes sense. Um, again, you're dealing with ammonium ions, uh, you know, where you, great, you got cations and now you've got, uh, sulfate, which is probably going to be, uh, anions. So if you had the right biochar there, you could, you could definitely, uh, cause some, uh, manipulation of release characteristics by that. So I like the logic he's applying, but unfortunately he's been suckered. Um, by the, the, the gray area of marketing that goes into this product night, it just, it chaps my ass because there is good that can come from it if used correctly. And, uh, and the problem is, is that no one, people would rather sell the claim than the data. Right. And, uh, and so the claim is not backed up by the data as we see here. And so unfortunately it gets, it, it causes people to put biochar into the bullshit category uh because Matt? again you're not going to increase water holding capacity you're not oh, and i and i also gotta you know go back to my you know favorite rant over the last week my favorite rant is that guy there dealing with turf grass growing on a usga mix is he no no or is he dealing with that alkaline high calcium clay that is typical for South Texas? It's probably insanely it. high sodium, uh, ins insanely and stupid high calcium. Soil. Yeah. And so let's always keep things in proper context because I can understand how adding biochar. To, to USGA spec spend would do something. I question how doing that or adding that to a clay soil that has monumentally high CEC is going to do anything more. What are you going to gain? Because the only way I could see this guy gaining from biochar is if he were to replace at least 25% of his soil with biochar. Not just spread five to ten pounds of it over the top. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, you know, again, homogenized with ammonium sulfate, you can manipulate release. Uh, but in this particular instance, if you think you're actually modifying your soil with it, no, you've been you've been duped, my my friend. Um, you've been the other thing sir. too is that without without seeing a soil test, I mean, he actually might have a legit sodic soil, and in lieu of biochar. This may be one of those instances. I, I don't know what his sodium to, to, to calcium levels are uh, or, or his pH, but in the event it is actually sodic, then he'd get a much bigger return on investment with gypsum in this particular instance than he would with, uh, with biochar. So um, I have he, one worse just, that he would just, get even. I he would get an, feel bad for this guy. I don't know why. So he would get an even bigger gain on, show. from you know, throwing down like. 10 pounds of elemental sulfur and then watering the hell out of it. Yeah. 10 pounds yeah, of tiger salt. Because you know, the problem with these alkaline soils that are also sodic, they have a lot of calcium in there already, except none of that calcium is in a form that would benefit as far as liberating that sodium and getting it out of the root zone. Because, okay. This man is literally a candidate to be on Aldo's program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, not yeah. kidding about that one. You mm -hmm. know the one where he's uh, drenching with citric acid and spreading elemental sulfur every month? That mm -hmm. program. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> with that being said, gentlemen, 
Uh, let's see. We're going to move over to. Oh, we should get this guy on. We should. Yeah, we have yeah. J Pink and reach out. Yeah. yeah. Can come on. If I was ready for the challenge. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. We- so, and Justin <laughs> is going to help. Justin's probably doing uh, life coaching consultations with J Pink right now. I have no doubt about it. No doubt in my mind. Um, okay. Speaking of people that need life coaching, uh, let's move on to Ron Henry and see what he's got to say here this week. Uh, oh, about a few things. We've got a few things here to dive into. Mm, Ron, take it away. Incredible. Which means we get to go play in our lawns. Yay for that. The question you guys are often asking is what do I need to water in? I got some liquids here and I have some granular fertilizers here. As a general rule, granular <laughs> products, so Humic Max, the complete 14714 you see here, the new Miramichi Organic Fertilizer, all those you should water in. When it comes to the liquids, so you got 901C, the kelp, and Nutrizolve, none of those need to be watered in. They are foliar products, meaning you, you allow lot. these to dry on the plant leaves. You, you spray them on your lawn and just let them dry. You don't do anything <laughs> else with them. Granulars, you run irrigation or time your application for when it's going to rain, and you're good to go. Hope that helps. Okay. <laughs> yep. So Didn't help. Thanks. One thing on that is, you know, if you're applying liquid products with humic acid and some of these other, you know, things that he has in there, would you not want those watered in? And the answer is, yeah, you do. So, again, it's easy to sit here and say, I, yeah, I gotta... grand their water and don't, liquid don't, but it's not that simple. It's just not. It's not that yeah, oversimplification is devaluation and, okay, I have some experience with this. Do you know what happens when you apply a concentrated humic solution to grass? Let me tell you what happens. You leave a black residue on the grass, and until that black residue get, gets watered in and washed off the turf grass, anybody that steps on that, especially if the grass is wet after, is going to screw their carpet, is going to screw their driveway, is going to screw their car, because now you have black shit all over everything. No bueno. All right, let's hear about Ron's new product, new, novel, cool product, and then we'll look at the label and see what you guys think. I'm sure it's going to be life-changing. (laughs) <laughs> solicited this year i've gotten more responses go look at my shorts people have been commenting saying what are you doing with your lawn this year it looks better this year color wise i just than saw it, it has in the in shorts pre- prior to what this and it did not look good by the way <laughs> for this this time of year that makes it look like this um and the big thing is that that micronutrient that new that new micronutrient um blend has been a has new been micronutrient that combined with you got to figure so you have we doing you have um release not getting real weird with this is a product that is that is designed for Mm -hmm. follower uptake really good at follower uptake and then you take a micronutrient that has folic acid in it to also help uh, micro to also maximize follower uptake you mix those two together and again literally a couple days after you spray it just pops off and looks looks incredible so pause weird weird okay first of all can we not under any circumstances listen uh, we have one of our loyal listeners, Brent, that tells you on, on his channel, uh, Western Master, um, words are tough. Lawn care words are tougher. <laughs> Can you please do foliar for Ron? Because for goodness sakes, he's been at it long enough. He should know better. But we still call it foliar. That's not some regional Foli- dialect bullshit, right? That's- that That's him fucking up the word. So you got to be careful okay. who you take so let's look at the label here real quick and let's dive into this because one of the claims he made was that fulvic acid makes it easier. Uh, it, it enters the plant right more efficiently and that helps these micronutrients enter. the plant. So this is the product that he is testing out this year. Apparently has not sold or will not sell this year, but essentially this is effectively what he's talking about in this particular case. So, let me look at this. Okay, we okay. have. Okay, so it's all EDT, EDTA chelates with fulvic and kelp. 
What? There is nothing, absolutely nothing novel about this. Uh, the EDTA rates are actually low. Mm hmm. Um, these are all really low. Yeah, it's it's low and let me low let me ask you this to rate. Me. Yeah. Uh, here, J Ping, I will let me let me send you this this picture real quick. Okay, we'll do we'll do this. Okay. Um, and if you if you just flip, okay, we've got we've got this right. We got grass here, and then flip flip back to Ron Henry's. Uh. Uh, grass where oops whoa whoa here we go where am i uh, you, on the short uh, just a picture of his yard it, it, so it spring matter. is i don't <laughs> one second you're fine you're fine my my point being is that uh in the in the the picture that he just showed there i i did that with ed edta chelated micronutrient mix no fulvic acid and let's see if there's any discernible difference between just an edta chelate or an edta chelate with fulvic acid hmm. surely surely there is a you know i mean look we're some we're some professional applicators here right like do, do you do you see the difference there oh yeah it's huge it's huge isn't it Mm hmm. Yeah, that is that is a big <laughs> fucking difference. I I'm going to be honest, guys. I don't see the fucking difference. I really don't. Um, I was lying when mm -hmm. I said I could see the. I don't I don't see the difference. Um, so what what are we what the fuck is he talking? We're about? we're making up another solution to sell to people. For, and tell people for a non-existent the, problem for yeah. a non-existent problem for, a non and for uh, when you've maxed out everything else right and you've put 97 other products on your lawn to make it look good and make people feel like they have to have all 97 in order for it to look good you have to invent a 98th right because the 97 aren't going <laughs> to carry you forever you got to get some new stooges in the in the hopper uh, I mean, I'm looking at this here. It says total other ingredients from fertilizer material is uh, he is not starting with max concentrated products if he only had room in the bottle for three percent fulvic acid and kelp extract. Uh, when I when I look at those those liquids there, if you were actually starting with a concentrate, you would have way higher analysis in there. Um, Matt, check out check out his application rate. Check that out. Twelve ounces per six to thousand square foot. Out. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, look at the. This is 12, this is crazy, 12, man. Twelve ounces per thousand square foot. Goodness me! I mean, might as well just dump that in the sprayer, undiluted, How much does and this cost? go ahead. <laughs> you don't want to know. It's not even on there yet. You don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I mean, because uh, is this going to be another fifty to seventy-five dollar a bottle thing? Dude, no. This is going to be like 150. Shit. This is a golf course lawn, lawn micros blend here. Guarantee you this is going to be $150 a gallon. Okay. All day long. Okay. Uh, you know, Matt, zinc, a, a full concentrated zinc EDTA is 9% uh, zinc, right? And mm -hmm. here, you know, we see three quarters of a percent. So if you, you can do the math on that to figure out uh, exactly mm -hmm. what what percentage of the bottle there my point being is that he's saying 97 percent of this is fertilizer material that is a complete and total fucking lie by the way it's just no that, it's that's a complete some, and total that's lie. some bullshit because mm -hmm. this is mostly water okay this is mostly mm -hmm. water and i'm thinking okay i can get this powdered edta mix from my simplot people and mm -hmm. That's a three pound bag and it has boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, and zinc in it as EDTA chelates. And you know that like four pound bag, 
That's how much you use on four acres, by the way. Four acres and cost of the bag is only fifty dollars. How's that, Matt? So, if I had to guess, I don't know, uh, but it, I I doubt he has the wherewithal to manufacture this. But he probably reached out to a toll manufacturer, and they are taking That's Andersons. It's Andersons. Andersons is making Ooh. this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Andersons has this labeled under something else. I guarantee you that if we look around and we can find it, it's probably a higher concentration and uh and then they are diluting it down for uh for home lawn. And uh mm-hmm. and it's it's a great margin for them and uh it's it's probably a better margin for uh Ron Burgundy here than uh I mean uh, Ron <laughs> Lemon than uh <laughs> some of the other other products he's selling. And so it's you know, he's like, man, this is amazing. How do I sell this? Yeah, you know, it's it's like, wow, these EDTA chelates are like in three, four, five days. It's just it's jumping into the plant. By the way, uh, who want? Here we go. This is the, we we'll, we will have someone on the show, uh, and if you need help uh, paying for it, by all means, uh, if you just want to spray some ferrous sulfate, and then spray this product next to it at a uh, at a at an equivalent <laughs> uh, at an equivalent rate, and let's see what the time difference is for, to to elicit a response. I, it, just for shits and giggles, we can we can have you on the show, and we'll we'll demonstrate it. And uh, if <laughs> if anyone uh, 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 can see a a difference there, then uh, we'll, we will personally buy a gallon of this of Ron as uh, as a as a sorry, but. I'm so confident in this that uh, I have I have no problem going out on that risk. And in fact, if if there is no discernible difference between just a sulfate nutrient being foliarly applied, foliarly applied, versus his foliar product, um, then uh, Ron has to donate a thousand dollars to St. Jude. How about that? Yeah, uh, there we go. Yes, he won't do it. Yes, he won't. Do it. <laughs> he, 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 he couldn't even give the, th- the th- he give you a two point nine nine percent discount. That's Niner. We didn't tell. Niner. We didn't round it up, but in in the in the back end of the software, um, let's see. I did pull this up real quick, just to see what is on the shelf here for these cats. And J Pink, go ahead and throw this up. This is what they currently have in their catalog right now. Full tech, yeah, yeah, yeah full tech yeah, products. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or maybe, what if, maybe it's the keyplex. Yeah. What if it's a combination of the well, full tech see-through is gonna be with full, oh wait, no, full tech yeah. LQ, these are liquids. Yeah. So what if it's like a see-through with fulvic acid and then add miners to that and kind of like shake the two together and dilute it a little and then throw it in a gallon. I mean, that's what yeah, it I looks like that, to me. Or they're using a um, uh, one of their ag products because it, what was this? Two percent iron and two percent manganese was yeah. was mm-hmm. the uh, yeah. I'm not seeing anything with a one to one fe to mn. Um, so that's why I was thinking yeah. it might it might have been a been an ag product or something. But an ag uh, special anyway, that anyway, uh, mm-hmm. it is. I mean, there is nothing. Water. There's nothing uh special about this at all at all if if this if this was you know 40 bucks a gallon something like that by all means go for it it's another another micronutrient mix uh you know but have at it uh but hey. it's i'm mm-hmm. curious of how this is going to be priced really curious i'm dying to know because so far you know dan and i have kind of cracked a lot of the buy my shit products and when I say crack them, we've duplicated them. <laughs> and so, oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah Dan, Dan the Lawnman and I have duplicated a lot of stuff. And, oh, the best one was, if you want a green lawn, mix these sulfates and chelated products together and apply them. And you will have green grass if you have a micronutrient deficiency. I know that video was super controversial, super controversial. Amazing. Because 
No, because Dan had to add a disclaimer in that if you get this wrong, your grass will die. Ah! Oops. <laughs> Don't mess up. Don't fuck this up. <laughs> exactly. Well, listen, we were talking about, uh, you know, disease and improperly identifying things, and I want to round this out by watching two of the absolute grand wizards of just <laughs> fumbling the handoff behind the line of scrimmage and having a scoop and score. Um, these people are terrible at their jobs, yet they film it and put it on uh, the internet for lots of people to see. So without further ado, Jay Pink, let's go ahead and watch John from John and Bob. Oh, no. That poor dog. I'm looking great for dog. an event. You can do something a little extra to make your lawn awesome. look almost So the idea here is that uh, this is the uh, title of the video, Spruce Up Your Lawn for Spring Events. And then it also says organic lawn fertilizer. Okay. You're playing That's the okay. Perfect that Living. day. Let's look at how we get this lawn ready for an April 20th wedding. Chip, what special events um, could we have at our house? Well, we're going to one. Okay. So this was published when, J Pink? One month, one ago. month ago. So April Zoom. 6th. I hate him. March, April I hate him. March, March 20th. No, oh, March 20th. I, I hate him. And you know why I, I hate him? He has stooped to a new low. Don't talk about the dog okay. like that. No, John has stooped to a new low because, oh. doggy, you have a piece of shit owner because look at that dog having to wear that GoPro harness. What the hell? <laughs> what in the actual hell? I mean, can we call man, the AKC? You know what I. Right. Yeah, you know what I do to people that are mean to animals gratuitously? Well, let's not say it on air. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, here we go. <laughs> to uh, our uncle's house, so he wants that lawn looking great. Birthdays, Father's Day is Uncle, a good one. Quote, Mother's unquote. Day is a good one because those are during the growing season. <laughs> A month out, like we are now, the approach should be very similar on any kind of lawn that Pause. we're planning to have an event on. All right. I'm not even sure that I would marry a homeless guy I met on the street and a skeezer, streetwalker, on this lawn. It's absolutely horrendous looking. If you're on audio only, I can't begin to describe you how bad this fucking lawn looks. There's oh, leaves everywhere. It's patchy ass Bermuda. I mean, Matt, this is this is the lawn of somebody in Augusta, Georgia that calls you the lawn boy and asks you why their mm-hmm. grass is growing. <laughs> mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they need it they need it fixed before mm-hmm. before the tournament and uh the tournament was the previous weekend. Yeah. Yee! And you tried, you tried <laughs> to sell them the eight app program but they said I'm only paying for three. I only want three <laughs> of them applications. All right, Sonny? <laughs> I know how my grass grow. <laughs> Tell me. Eight crazy. And this right here, part of their payment, they they expose themselves to me as if I, that's going to discount the application. No, fertilizing <laughs> it, watering it just <laughs> perfectly, mowing it frequently, getting it to grow as much as we can. We want it as healthy as possible and as green as possible. I try to avoid using pre-emergence if I can because they're not good for soil. Sometimes it's hard to what? avoid, and in this case, it was overrun by crab. Show grass. me the data. This Pause. is the crab. Oh wait, but we'll back it up because I I do want to watch this part. But pre-emergence are bad for soil. Mm. What does that even mean? How? He doesn't. Okay. Know. <laughs> he has no idea because you forget here's to take your pills. what the data. No, oh, here's what the data has actually indicated is that did you know that a lot of pesticides when regularly applied literally become food for microbial growth? It does happen. It's not possible, right? He's killing the soul, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because uh, otherwise, I also know that, you know, the EPA They've forced manufacturers to go through testing to prove that 
their product does not have negative effect on off-target organisms, including soil microbial life. And if that product does have a negative effect, it has to be clearly stated on the label that there is a negative effect. So keep going with the the pre-emergent kills the soil because if that's so, then damn, Syngenta's in big trouble. Well, not only that, Syngenta's in huge they, trouble right now. <laughs> when they cut to this, and if you're on audio only listening to it, they cut to a close-up shot where there are more weeds, broadleaf mm. weeds, and dead and summer grand- annual weeds that are just all mm-hmm. over the place. I mean, uh, pre-emergent harming the soil is like number 842 <laughs> on the list of shit that i'm worried about a month out from the wedding i'll be honest with yeah you, okay <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. but l- let's listen to this gem here about the crabgrass that we're gonna hit what we see on the lawn to avoid in, in this God. case it was overrun by crab <laughs> this oh, God. is the crabgrass that didn't come back it's not going to come back because we applied dimension on about january Pause. 17th what okay so they put pu- this is california california I thought, I thought this was organic lawn fertilizer. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, SEO game, dog. You know, the, the crap, but, but did you notice the, the dumbest fucking thing that we've heard all night so far? So far, and we've listened to some pretty incredulous shit. The crabgrass didn't come back. Now, how could that be? It just didn't come back. I think, well, winter. Because it's, it's not reached the, the germination Win- point. It's an end. It's, <laughs> it's dead from last year. We're looking at carcasses yeah. of dead crabgrass plants from last year when this thing was not only overrun by all the broadleaf weeds that currently exist out there as of March of 2024, but we also have the dead rotting corpses of all the fucking crabgrass that covered this lawn back in 2023. <laughs> it's a stark reminder, guys, that there's not enough chalk to put all the chalk body outlines of all the crabgrass that cover this fucking lawn at one point. <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh-huh. There's our death talk for tonight. Now, <laughs> listen. Yes, you also mentioned that you know pre-emergence are bad for the soil. We only we have organic lawn fertilizer in the title, but you know what? What do we do? Hey, January 18th. You know, you guys were getting ready to watch NFL playoff games. I was out here killing the soil. That's what I was doing, <laughs> <laughs> and making that and making that poor dog run with a GoPro on its back, and probably causing it spinal <laughs> problems and shit and and getting little little pre-emergent footprints all over it. god bless him okay let's watch and see what john has to say here that timing has to be about right so that the seed doesn't sprout again when weather starts to get warm like today you can apply a pre-emergent even now especially in climates that have had winter till now then a pre-emergent will still work you can apply a pre-emergent anytime really it's just yeah, that your face will out of the be- camera He's one of those old people that gets closer effect. the more he talks to you. He just gets closer uh, and closer. And you're back. Closer up. and closer. Back the fuck up, old man. I'll swing on you. <laughs> but, pause. So he says there again, pre-emergence is bad for the soil. You go back about 45 seconds of video. It's what he says. You fast forward to now. He says, hey, you can apply a pre-emergent pretty much any time you want. You know, you just got to be on the window for the weeds you're trying to kill. So which is it here? I'm 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 very confused at this point if I don't know anything about agronomy and specifically turf grass management, right? Bad for soil, but anytime you want to go out there and do it, right? Just as you said, Matt, you know, if you want to lose a week of your life, it's not the greatest thing in the world to do, but you can do acid anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> All ten of them, right? All ten yeah. of it. <laughs> like you're All knocking down cool. pins of the bowling alley. Let's go. <laughs> that will it be yeah. at its maximum effectiveness? And maximum effectiveness is impacted by weather. If something like Bermuda oh. that spreads like crazy, then you can fill bare spots. If you had, you know, a grass that doesn't spread like that, like fescue or bluegrass, they spread very gradually, then you will have to rely more on overseeding. In our area, this is a fine time to overseed too. We could overseed, but Pause. what we want to do... No, you can't. No, you can't. You just put down pre-emergent in January. Hello. Poor I mean, John here God cannot sake. keep up. I mean, he is... He, he, I'm, I'm not going to lie. This guy's about as put together as Joe Biden is. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, so. oh wow. Oh, play it, play it, play it, play it. Is Nobody got that. Damn it, that was a good one. The old overseer, <laughs> but what we want to do <laughs> is make this Bermuda Ooh, lawn. The overseeding wouldn't encourage the Bermuda at all. In oh, fact, there's some competition that goes on when you overseed, so you're kind of um, delaying the progress of the Bermuda <laughs> filling in. If overseeding is your strategy to get your lawn looking good, you need to give it enough time to germinate and then root and be sturdy to take traffic. You know, it'll look good in two weeks. It... No, it won't. <laughs> We're a month out from the wedding. No, it won't. There. We are loaded to the gills with, with, with competition from broadleaf weeds, which are thriving at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are living their best life, okay? Probably a pride like a like a twenty four oh ten with dimension on it, and they are just like man, wah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now let's go ahead and overseed. Boy, how uh -huh. somebody has Ooh, followed the, mean, all the instructions on this videos, and they're sitting there thinking, "Well, shit, we might have to call off the wedding. This is going to ruin <laughs> somebody's life." There's no doubt in my mind. This YouTube video has ruined a bride and groom's future together, right? And what are we going to do with all this mm -hmm. goddamn catering? We should find out where the wedding is. We'll go crash it. We'll eat. We'll have a good party. And we'll talk all about how John has completely ruined uh, the love affair of two young kids. It's fucking terrible. All right, let's play it. We'll have Someone just said come Chip up, used to be look a great beautiful, name. but it will also <laughs> be not well-rooted. And so it wouldn't take... That's, that's what happens when you apply pre-emergent to them all the time. No! <laughs> <laughs> Take traffic very well. So you'd need five or six weeks for it to be in a position to take traffic. Five Since or six weeks. They have on a special occasion seeds. coming, some and they want that lawn as green as possible. We're gonna feed the lawn, feed the soil with the nourish biosol. And then I'm gonna consider, depending on what it looks like in two or three weeks, one shot of a synthetic fertilizer high in nitrogen. I'm gonna do a heavy application, which is about ten pounds per thousand of nourish biosol. I'm going to use a spreader what is, what is, because is, this is about 10,000 square feet. Uh, you uh, it's humic acid and garbage. It. It's a lot to throw around on this. Pause, pause, pause. What, pause what's pause. this analysis? Did you hear that? What's this analysis? Okay, while you're looking that up, uh, the did you hear what he just said? He's like, this lawn's pretty big. It's 10,000 square feet. So I'm going to use a spreader because otherwise, Home Slice would have went out there and fed the geese like he was at a fucking peep show, jacking off with some <laughs> porno flick. <laughs> Across the entire lawn. <laughs> yep. I'm use I mean, spreader uh, haven't we seen that uh, that technique before, right? Where he's high. like throwing fertilizer by hand, what, like he's some kind we, of a medieval slave. <laughs> we we have, and I'll tell you what: the the last guy to use a jerking off motion to cover that much ground with anything that's fertility related was Peter North in California. So John's going for number two in the record books. You ain't going to beat Pete North. <laughs> Do through ropes. I'm going to do a heavy application, which is about 10 pounds per thousand of nourished biosol. I'm going to use a spreader because this is about 10,000 square feet. Uh, you see me throw things around, but it's a lot to throw around on this. It's a the nice six thing one is one. sometimes. So six tenths of a pound. Six one. Mm -hmm. Six tenths uh, of a pound. With a soybean meal, cottonseed meal, sulfate of potash, magnesia. So uh, a little K mag, a little supple mag. Some soybean and cottonseed meal. Yeah, and good. how quickly available is the nitrogen from soybean and cottonseed meal, oh, per chance? Rapid as a sun, bitch. <laughs> not, <laughs> not two to three <laughs> weeks, boy. So, yeah, we'll give it two to three weeks, and then we'll follow it up with some synthetic fertilizer because we know sure as shit it isn't going to do a damn thing. Maybe, because maybe it'll kill all the clover and shit out there. I don't know. At this point, dude, oh, I don't man, know. Hang I up. mean, you are legitimately making it all up. <laughs> so right, and get the you can go for off the dog. It won't burn. You don't have to worry about it. And get the damn go for off the dog. Rain while you're at coming, it. so we're gonna use rain to water it in. If you're applying at ten pounds per thousand, you 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 need to open that spreader a little more. So buddy. this is uh, considered a weed, oxalis, and it there's a lot of it in this lawn. For now, we're gonna ignore it. The pre-emergent didn't do much to the what oxalis. Maybe it is. I can't. Uh, I, from from here, that looks like clover. Fairly certain that's not oxalis. I could be wrong. But Matt, hey, I'm going to tell you that in California and Hawaii, 
There is an uh-huh. extremely large leaf variant of Oxalis. Oh, and yeah, yeah. you know what? Old man can redeem himself by correctly identifying because do you know what the difference is between clover and Oxalis when it comes time to treat it? Uh, yeah, Traclopyr versus 2,4-D. Exactly, because if you do conventional three-way on Oxalis, this is what the Oxalis shows you. <laughs> uh, no, Ray. Uh, in California here, uh, John or Bob, whoever this is, has figured out that all you need to do is apply soybean meal, and magically it gets rid of it. It's amazing. It, it goes... <laughs> and so no, you mean wait, that all, all my decades, I should have just... I should have just applied soybean meal, Matt. I should have just done soybean yeah, meal it. for the, all that the oxalis. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, landscape architect just figured out turf. We're just a bunch of, of peons up here. Well, now we're see, gonna is he okay? He's not okay, is much he? To the oxalis. There are ways to kill no, it. We would need a chemical. A but we're going to see if we can get the lawn looking great with the oxalis and maybe discourage it a little what? bit with real strong growth. Oh, God. Very unique in that this is completely plant-based. No meat products in it at all huh <laughs> you need about that it has no meat products in it are you smoking fucking crack dude who is this wait, guy Matt. wait a minute because he is right because do you know what my favorite quote-unquote all organic nitrogen source is if i have to go all organic blood meal yup blood meal hell yeah bring on the uh Blood and bone meal mix. I, I mean, I'm fairly certain and, all the synthetic nitrogen that he's going to have to rely on when this fails to elicit a response is going to be animal free too. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, That's because all. do you know if I had to if I had to green up a lawn, quote unquote, organically, I would be throwing down 15 pounds of blood meal per thousand. Yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> not kidding work. about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah is it's feeding <laughs> like the lawn afraid, but dude. we're also feeding the soil and there's not many fertilizers that do that getting the soil and the lawn what? as healthy as we can get it is it's feeding the lawn but we're also feeding the soil and there's not many fertilizers that do that getting the soil no. and the lawn as healthy uh, as we can get it again will help it recover fast and really all fertilizers feed from a one day event usually through the soil a problem at all it's when you have repeated events so if we want to oh, use boy. synthetic <laughs> fertilizer in terms of color it will do so Damn. in seven to ten days but what we want to do here more than just color is maximum growth because we're trying to get it to spread and fill in all these fertilizer areas. only induces the color not growth a that lot of is growing d- and mo- demay we're really barking on the door here of fucking idiocy to, to new and new degrees this is impressive yes. i told you Mowing will make Bermuda cover up quickly. That's going to be my strategy for making this lawn really, really green and healthy and relatively thick and dense because we don't want people to be walking what? on dirt. You can throw all the <sighs> synthetic fertilizer you want on there, and if the temperatures are not warm enough, it's not going to respond. So we're just. What? An organic fertilizer is right- different? Organic <laughs> fertilizers are actually way different because, you know, if yeah. you have cold weather, they don't do fuck for you because if it's cooler weather and you want to get that grass growing, you know what my mix was back in the day when it went before ATF? AN and KNO3, Matt. <laughs> Together. <laughs> yeah. what, what is this guy, what is this guy isn't, doing? Isn't, isn't he in California? California. Yeah. Yes, he is. That's a heated if vest he's wearing. Yeah. Is it really if you're that cold? That vest on March twentieth. Then chances are your Bermuda is still going to be that lackluster April twentieth too. Funny, the wedding's on April twentieth as well, isn't it? Or oh, fucking. I have an alternate theory. The reason why he has to wear a heated vest is because old man is nearly dead. And he's <laughs> doing that so that he doesn't become hypothermic. Man, that's good talk to me on <laughs> burden return. <clears throat> Temperatures that will give us about a month before the wedding. And that's mm. a good amount of time in order to encourage growth. And it'll look completely different. 
Lawn usually looks you. best right after it's mowed, so I'd say uh, the day before the event is a good time to mow, even two days before the mm. event. Is I'd say during the mow. event. Also, usually when you mow, <laughs> you plan the watering so that the soil isn't real wet, and that's good for the event, too. We want it dry enough to mow and Pause. then dry enough to... I've only had one wedding myself, but I've been to a lot of them, and I can tell you the wetter they are, the better they are. Keep it going. About to come. <laughs> Be firm and not moist at all. It's a bad idea to water before the event. Hopefully, wait, 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 back, 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 back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Play that again. Before the event. No, a little bit further. Go about 15 seconds back. Even two days before the event is a good time to mow. Also, usually when you mow, you've planned the watering so that the soil isn't real wet. And that's good for the event, too. We want it dry enough to mow and then dry enough to be firm and not moist at all. It's a bad Pause. idea to water. I don't know if we need firm, but we definitely need not moist at all. So if you can get that, that'd be great. All right. <laughs> that's a nice descriptor for the lady in his life. I will tell you <laughs> what, boys. That. That. As far as a connect the dots and it, it just it devolving more and more as it went on, it was pretty bad. But now you did. But now, all right, I'm going to show you one that's even worse, and it's from somebody that we have known and held dear and close to our hearts uh, on this show for a very very long time, and we'll we'll feature how we know him and where we know him from here in just a few minutes. But uh, Ginja, please take it away. Thanks for tuning in, guys. It's Pest and Lawn, Ginja. And this is What's Wrong With My Lawn. <laughs> What's Wrong With My Lawn is a video series where I go out and diagnose people's lawns Pause. just like your... You ever go to the doctor's office and immediately not trust the person in the lab coat? I have. I have. Mm -hmm. I mean... No. And actually, I'm the worst person to ask because you see, guess what kind of doctor is my worst nightmare? One with a red beard? Oh, not wrong. The vegan? Because the worst doctor I've had had a red beard. He probably weighed about 140 pounds and he was six foot tall. Mm. I did not Typical trust him. Vegan. Uh huh. Typical yeah, vegan. vegan marathon, yeah, ver vegan marathon runner, and he was supposedly, uh, like a prominent doctor for the American Diabetes Association. Ray oh, wants God. the heart surgeon that smokes Marlboro Reds. That's what he's looking for. Oh, you know, you yeah. know what I that want? On no, both sides, all the way. No, I want, I want the doctor that, kid you not, literally looks like Tom Platts. <laughs> That's who I want for my doctor. If you know, you know. <laughs> how about how about Tom Selleck? Can we trade down a little bit? All right, let's yes. play. No. No, not Tom Selleck. <laughs> no. Or is <laughs> at home using my five-step diagnostic approach of color, pattern, water saturation test, the debris test, and a pull test to tell us <laughs> what is causation versus correlation. Then I give you the solutions oh, to buddy, that's fixing the last the fucking one. And as you usual, need to use. it always starts with the walkthrough. <laughs> Let's go. Now, there's always been something suspicious to the homeowner about the front yard because it stays green all year round. It's just kind of funky. Oh, I found the problem. It's uh, it's fake. It's artificial. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. Turf <laughs> grass so is way cool. Moving on to the backyard where the problem begins. We can see that uh, overall fuck, we've got it is quite fucked. a number of things going on. And in Good this grief. instance, this can be... Good grief. Yeah. Jesus. Wait till you hear the story behind this mm -hmm. one. It's, it's mm -hmm. rather interesting. All right, let's 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 play it come very overwhelming so i'd like to get a history on this lawn all right james so i'm here to shine this turd with you but uh why don't you give us a little bit of a history on you this like when did you start on this project and kind of what, what have you done yeah 
So two years ago, it was just a dirt canvas with a whole bunch of tiers. So we did all the grading, okay. got this nice patch. Then we put the sod in two years ago, the sprinkler system. It hasn't really panned out. There's a lot of settling. A lot of dips and all right dents so. we're gonna we're gonna take a look at it but what do you want to let do him with talk the asshole like, what why is, is he goal? such a fucking <laughs> cock he's an oh, asshole like First off, if I hired someone to do something at my lawn and they look me in the eye they'd be like I'm here to shine this turd with you I'd be like fuck you man get the fuck out of here <laughs> then that he asked the guy for a history and cut him off to move on to the next didn't segment let him of finish video talking while he was still talking. Yeah, didn't let what him a piece of shit. Didn't let him finish talking. At least he didn't elbow him. Matt. No, oh, Matt. Oh, he's his dickless. goal is to have a sports field. Get ready. Get ready, Demay. He's going to teach you how to do sports turf right here tonight, today. <laughs> yeah. Is Where's I the ass to play sports on? Where's on the strip? Very level, no okay. ankle turner <laughs> holes, and all uh, right. So yeah, level and and a nice right. spongy well, feel for bare feet. So. We're not looking for just like an easy weekly maintenance thing. Like you want something kind of sports fieldy. Is that what I'm Yeah, doing? this is this has to be my pride and joy. Reflect how I'm feeling on the inside. All right, man. Outside, well, so. what if we put a timer on this again. 90 days? Yeah. You fucking dick. You, you put the work in? Yeah. All right, man. Well, let's get back to the diagnostic. Step number one is pattern, and this would be classified as random patterns throughout the cut instead oh, of you not. Nice, nice. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not random. <laughs> because, do you know, guys, do you know what I see in this uh, sports field? Do you know what I see? You know what stands out to me? What's uh, up? Irrigation lines, uh, a fire pit that used to be there. Uh, what else? No, irrigation coverage. Irrigation coverage. Mm -hmm. Okay, because a lot of this funkiness in the grass, I would, if I were to flip on this guy's sprinkler system and watch it, I could probably find a lot of areas where the irrigation is not covering properly. Just saying, because I've been doing this for only 30 plus years. Cut instead of uniform. And this would be classified as random patterns throughout the cut instead of <laughs> uniform, meaning one solid issue. Now, step number two is color. You'll notice that we have patches of green. We've also got patches of brown slash yellow, and we've also got gray. <laughs> now, let me explain these issues to you. For instance, in this corner, we've got yellow. Yellow typically means we've got some sort of burning happening, meaning most likely fertilized <laughs> about four weeks ago. Hasn't had a sufficient amount of water, Pause. which means... Okay. <laughs> I have <laughs> uh, cr created... I have seen and I have observed the aftermath of lots of fertilizer burn. I'll admit it. I have no problem with it. We all fuck up. You, you know, if you're not trying, you haven't done it. This in no way, shape, or form looks like fertilizer burn at all. Nope. Like, no way. If it is, Ray, what does this tell you about the applicator? You couldn't even the try applicators to fuck on acid? Like this. I, <sighs> applicators on acid. Yeah, applicator is definitely on acid. Maybe he had John out there throwing fertilizer by hand, and that's what that's what's causing all of the uh, you know uneven distribution. But then I'm saying this has got nothing to do with fertilizer because okay, even if somebody were to be a little bit off with their application, if they had a good properly functioning irrigation system wouldn't that irrigation system kind of make up for that sin with sufficient water so that the grass wouldn't burn out in patches like that wouldn't it no what we have here is random uh, random displacement <laughs> disorder and uh, we're like over here this is our best application of fertilizer so it's four <laughs> weeks ago as a matter of fact i can taste it what's he gonna lie to us about next he doesn't have a sufficient his amount of water, which means that we've got some burning going on. Then we've got the white areas. This color is usually associated with what? either fungus or tissue no, that has been not. dead a very long time. No, and the it's third just dead grass. That's all. It is not fungus. It's just <laughs> dead grass. 
And he diagnosed Lord. it as brown patch. And we've this got guy, the white this guy is areas. A fucking moron. This color is gonna usually need... associated with either fungus or we tissue that, that has been Pause. dead a very. Also going to need that clip too. Uh, we've got the white areas. Make sure we get that one too, please. Um, <laughs> we'll use it in the future. Trust me. Um, <laughs> so he's insinuating here that this is, I think he lists off. Let's see what he says here real quick. He lists off what he thinks that these could be from. Which means that we've got some burning going on. Then we've got the white areas. This color Pause. is usually a so fungus caused by humidity, rainfall, shade, leaves, and other. What do you think the relative humidity in the greater Utah area has been for the last, I don't know, two months? Niner. <laughs> That's the fucking Single number, digit. Niner. Single digit, okay? Single digit. Uh if not, hey, I can always call and ask Zach. He'd have a number. Or Castleberry. Castleberry would know. Yeah, yeah. let's ask Castleberry. I mean, how many leaves do you see on this lawn? Zero. He, he, That's the number there. <laughs> zero point zero. <laughs> and, 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 and if we go back to the wide angle shot, Regardless of what direction that we're looking in that video, which I would assume with based on where he's at, uh, would be, I believe, to the to the east. Uh, I don't see a lot of shade out there, boys. Pretty wide open. He's got some trees in the, in the lot next door on the other side. But this is wide open, full sun. So no humidity, mm -hmm. no leaves, no shade. But we got white turf. Sounds pretty fucking racist to me. <laughs> <laughs> Associated with either fungus or tissue that has been dead a very long time. And the third color is brown, which is commonly associated with lack brown of patch. water. Super of water. common for this well, time I of year, always especially think brown when patches and lack of water. Okay. <laughs> now, I think the frustrating part about these type of situations, we have to diagnose random patterns individually and this is where a lot of you guys go wrong you'll test one section what? one and not all oh. the others and come to one that is one what? diagnosis we may have that is two one diagnosis you, 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 you I'm just causation over factors fucking that's what we got to figure out he won't let anybody Step else number talk three i'm just going to talk over him test. too and the whole point of this <laughs> test is to take a thatch rate it's just to uh, see to how much debris the whole has accumulated on top of the soil the problem with this happening is there a more performative test that, you know, I, I couldn't tell you. It, it might be 50-50. I don't know. But it's probably like on the bell curve because I bet you here's what it is. There's probably 20% of people that look at that and be like, that's amazing. He's got this fucking medieval torture device that he's putting on the lawn, and he's really going to figure <laughs> out what's going on. Yeah, right. And then look at what's coming up. Look at that is it's like people, you know, the old religious games where they would pull tumors out of people, you know, but like using <laughs> chicken livers and shit. This is exactly what yep. he's doing in this guy's back lawn right here. He's pulling out a fucking tumor. You got the other 20 percent of people that are like, this is complete bullshit. Heresy. Mm -hmm. Get off my fucking property. And the other 60 percent of people are just like. What in God's name is that? I don't know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> He must know Someone what he's out doing, there is though. aching to sell this guy boron, without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> the, entire, the entire boron lobby is going to descend on Utah after this, for sure. Big boron coming for you. Now, the problem with this happening is this. Grass blades like to grow out either in your clumping formation outward, or they grow with rhizomes or stolons and regenerate. And the debris stops that process from happening. Then you get a bunch of pitted areas. Pause. So fucking pause. 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 No pause. 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 Okay. Doesn't. Another How, okay. top lie of the day. That has got to be the top lie of the day. So you're telling me, right, that a plant like grass has a root, right, including a rhizome that has to push through soil, right? Rhizomes are below ground. Has to push through soil uh -huh. that's compacted at some ungodly. PSI compared to whatever the fuck debris is here, uh -huh. but it can't, uh -huh. it can't do it. No, no, no. I would love we to have, ask Travis Shaddix. We, we have Bermuda the, that, that completely covers gravel. 
completely covers gravel, but a fucking simple piece of lawn debris, and you are fucked. Completely <laughs> fucked, ruined. You get nothing. Can you, can you do not pass yeah, go? I mean, straight to jail. Yeah, and you know what's really disturbing me at this point? He has failed to look at probably the most important thing. Is he blinking? Not yet. He hasn't, bl he hasn't blinked yet. But Matt, Ryan, he has not looked at what would solve all of his puzzlement as to why the grass is like looking bad randomly like that when it's not turn that on, random. Turn on the irrigation system. Turn on the motherfucking turn on the, yeah. turn on the motherfucking irrigation system. And he's yeah. Did I tell you yeah, did I tell you guys about how guys we have a new one here at our project. Well, yeah. it turns out sixteen heads weren't even turning on. <laughs> yeah. Because Matt so we're Ryan, did I tell you guys today and then run a dethatcher over it with the sun, Joe, and apply a little boron, yeah. and we'll be back in six weeks. <laughs> yeah, because did I did I tell you guys about the time that I had a lawn bowling club member who lived in one of the condos, looking directly over the bowling green, and he showed me a picture of the bowling green one day, and he said, "Hey, hey Ray, how come there's like a donut shaped Simpson. pattern mm -hmm. in the yeah in, no." in the middle of the bowling green and i said thank you sir and you know what that was that was a shitty irrigation head not dropping enough water in the middle just like mm -hmm. that i mean turns but, out the backflow was shut the entire time <laughs> who knew <laughs> <laughs> yikes <laughs> Ops that process from happening then you get a bunch of pitted areas throughout your lawn so here's the thing you liar. Yeah, you're a liar. debris test <laughs> it's a solid uh, D Fail. plus. <laughs> you can see wow. all of this that is taken just a from lot this of growth stopping. small I mean, area right here. I know a lot of you guys are thinking, Ginger, he just laid the sod. And this is pretty common. Can also be a part of the watering practices that you can see every what? single time that I did oh, a slight debris that test. Stopped grass. Mm -hmm. So this could be part of the watering practice. So he's going to go do the soil. Uh, what does he call it? Soil hydration test or whatever the fuck fancy term he's got made up for it. Sticking a probe in the fucking ground, you know, normal shit. All right. He just pulls up more and more and more. Step number four is our water saturation water test. Saturation. This is probably one of my favorites and most important tests. It's going to show us what type of soil that we have, how much thatch has actually accumulated, and it's also going to show us how much water is physically sitting in the soil. So I really enjoy the soil probe test. This is going to tell me exactly what's in the soil. Now his soil on the bottom end, his soil has a lot of topsoil in it, which is no surprise because he brought a lot of things in. Shockingly, the grass that he put in last season has pretty decent rooting. I'm at about four inches on the rooting. Roots pretty white, which tells me it's not super stressed, pretty happy. Now here's kind of the shocking part, right? Doesn't look like it. Brand new sod. We've already got about a little under half an inch of thatch coming through here. Not a big deal, which except is, for the fact that he's got some pretty higher. hefty goals. Pretty good. And when it comes to the actual soil and water saturation. Nice. All right. Now I'm going to explain something to you gentlemen about thatch mm -hmm. and sports fields. Okay? okay. In a sports field situation, thatch is actually a good thing. Now you can have too much. Oh. And for the obvious reasons, mm -hmm. everything that we've always learned, mm -hmm. but thatch is literally the thing that is going to interact between the cleat, the athlete, and the surface, okay? That's what they dig okay. into. That's what they turn on. That's what they decelerate, accelerate, change direction, all that fucking Matt, bullshit I, in here. Ryan? Just, yes. Okay, I have a question for you. Is it true that about a half an inch of thatch also acts as, for lack of a description, like a padding or a cushion? So that should somebody get tackled, they're not going to get slammed into hard ground, totally hard yeah, ground. Abso absolutely. We've got ways <laughs> that we can measure the firmness of the ground, right? And that doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily correlate directly to injury, but this is a crucial piece. The other thing, too, is that this sod was grown probably for a period out in Utah, I would guess at least 10 months, probably closer to 12 mm -hmm. or 13 prior to harvest. So it's going to have mm -hmm. thatch. That's the way that Kentucky bluegrass grows. So 
for homeboy here to get worried about a half an inch of thatch on something that might be a sports field or should be a sports field or whatever, right? And especially not deducing from the fact of how it was planted, how it was established, and the shitty way it's been maintained up to this point should tell him that this is fine. But he's going to make a big fucking deal about this and go on and on. The fact that we've got four-inch roots on sod that, you know, Kentucky bluegrass sod in this climate that are four inches down, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So let's see what he has to say. That, that looks pretty good. <laughs> I'd like to see six to eight inches of water saturation, especially in clay or topsoil type situations. And we've Pause. literally got... Okay, so we haven't applied irrigation. We haven't even tested the fucking irrigation system yet. yet we're <laughs> supposed to have water saturation down to, to six or eight inches. In a climate that has a relative humidity around, what did Matt say? Niner? Okay. Nine uh, to- niner, yeah. Tommy boy was doing the weather the other day and when Matt listened to it. Uh, and the whole point here is that we're not going to have that without supplemental irrigation in this climate. So for fuck base to sit here and say that, well, we've got to have, we've got to have uh, soil, uh, soil moisture down six to eight inches, even soil moisture. Get the fuck out of here. You're not going to have that in a climate like that, where it's consistently and always going to be drying from the top down. You'd have to completely change your irrigation practices. And thus far, I have no reliable information that this irrigation system is even on or functional. Let's let him continue. <laughs> Next to nothing. Uh, you can see it's crumbling. Here's the craziest part. It just rained. We got some rain yesterday, but obviously How much? when you don't have a history of watering properly, this is what you're going to look at. But even the top layers don't have enough water How much? to it. And this was from some of the plugs in the green areas. When we come to the yellow areas, Here's my plug. This is it. Solid inch, inch and a quarter is all we have. Now, the interesting aspect is. His plug is only an inch and a half. No thatch <laughs> problems. The thatch problems were kind of area isolated, but it was mostly in the green areas, which means it's possible oh, overwatering scenario when he was putting the sod in. Oh that is very, very common to have, have overwatering scenario. When no thatch in scenarios with with overwatering. Is that what he's saying? Yup, he just said it, Matt. He just said it, and I okay. I am gonna have a heart attack. Man, I'm you know what that means, for Matt? This. Why I, is this guy do... on the fucking internet? <laughs> Wait, yo, he but he just mo- gave me an answer to my problems. All I gotta do is just run the everybody's fucking irrigation to put down four inches of water a week and i'll never have thatch in it he just can solved I my problem calendly link so he can be my therapist because i am not okay <laughs> <laughs> mostly in the green areas which means it's possible over watering scenario when he was putting the sod in that is very very common to have happen he so he overwatered the sod almost two years ago and it's still green there mm-hmm. that is some magic fucking H2O. I'll tell you I, what. I, we have I, defined the laws of physics out here. This guy takes stupid to incredibly <laughs> new levels every time we watch him. And it's almost hard for me to wrap my mind around. Again, this is the perfect example of someone that is so engrossed with their own bullshit that they, they believe it and it takes them to further and further depths of new bullshit because of whatever God complex he has going on. That's probably why he beats his child, because that God yeah. complex is telling him that this is the appropriate way to get them to listen to me. Now, well, just elbow them in the chest hard. Let, let's, <laughs> let's do a quick aside here um, mm-hmm. while we're watching this. Seriedomesticabuser.com. Yeah, you can go <laughs> check out. And we didn't make this up. We didn't. This is just shit that we encounter, and it happens. Yeah. Seriedomesticabuser.com. It. it was posted go- on the internet. Go ahead and click over there, JPEG. Let's let's check that out real quick. Let's get a control T on that bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Tally did say that uh, his his firmness may correlate with injury. God, the look of disgust on his face for his own child as he elbows him in the chest is just everything you need to know. So to mm-hmm. set this up real quick, this is a video on a different channel. I'm sure we have the link. I'm sure we could post it in the show notes. We'll find it. It's this lady's gardening channel. 
She invites him on. He goes on and talks. The video is maybe 20 minutes long. He's got his son there with him. I'm assuming it's his son. I don't know if it's biological or not. I'm not going to get into that. Don't know. But the kid is kind of bugging him saying, hey, dad, hey, dad, hey, dad, you know, wants to play, wants, you know, something to eat, whatever, whatever, whatever. Finally, Genji gets so upset that the kid is directly behind him. And if you're watching audio only, you can't see this, but literally like reverse going backwards, like shoulders the kid, like just right with his uh his trap and his shoulder blade right in the kid's chest knocks him back the kid is completely stunned and if you watch the video the full clip the kid kind of like walks back and is unsure of what's going on and why he just got you know bodied by his old man yeah and is looking back yeah. at the camera kind of like what the fuck but also scared as shit at the same time so <laughs> the face he makes show. the grimace he makes as he does it is one of just utter disgust too I mean, it's like I'm working. Yeah. It's like, do you understand how much of a piece of shit you're being right here, child? There's no room for pieces of shit like you on my breakfast table. Yeah, it's uh, listen, kid, I, like that guy. I need to eyeball the blonde with the huge tatas right now. And you're getting in my fucking way. <laughs> some titties, Ray. Does, he, aren't... does he get to the pull test? I'm, I'm ready. Oh, I'm ready to see this pull test here. Um, overwatering does uh, cause some does of these problems. Have, does it have this guy's got a grub? He's got an extreme amount of experience with the pull test. I'm just gonna say, uh huh. Uh -huh. But we're gonna have to talk Doesn't to him about it. Doesn't look like he gets to pull on much of anything. Step number five is a pull <laughs> test, and the whole point of the pull test is to see if we've got some sort of turf destroying insect like a grub or some sort of a sod webworm. Now, the point of this test is uh, to what? use our Go back and watch what? him say, side, okay, we, we would not see Sod Webworm at this time of year, but watch him go back and say, no. he has a little bit of a Ron Henry twitch here when he's uh, trying to make mm -hmm. it up on the spot. Watch him. When he to see webworm. if we've got some sort of turf destroying insect, like a grub or some sort of a Sod Webworm. Now, the point of this test is to use our bear claws, oh, yeah. not our he crabby did. pinchers, uh, uh, to physically grab come up with a something. Clump sounds of grass smart. and pull it. Stop being a pussy. Hang, hang on, man. Say something smart. I actually did a legitimate pull test, but it was for something else, wasn't it? I did an actual legitimate pull test. Was that right. chest-supported chest rows? What were, you, what no, were you doing? No, no. I was pulling on turf grass to make sure that the turf seedlings were actually established and rooted in the soil and oh, all i needed oh, to do yeah, yeah, yeah. was just you know grab between my two fingers not claw the goddamn ground and oh by the way you do not test for insects necessarily by just pulling on the ground because the better way to test for insects is to cut the bottom off of a bucket put a little bit of soap in it and then runs run the water hose in that bucket, and here's what's going to happen: you got sod webworms, they're going to be swimming. You got bill bugs, they're going to be swimming. If you got chinch bug, they're going to be swimming. And then, once you take away that bucket, you can easily peel up that circle of sod. And if you peel up that circle of sod and you count more than ten grubs. In that circle of sod, you probably got a problem. Or I don't know, cranberry I, I girdlers, as he likes to reference all the time. I, I, mm -hmm. I thought the last time that you did the pull test that uh, you ordered a full dozen for Brisket Cream and Sheila was the baker. <laughs> that too, right? That too. <laughs> all right. We got some cream fields. We got them all. Up on the cream and feeling you know, is right here, Ryan. <laughs> if it actually pulls up and out. In this instance, we are negative on the pull test. No current signs of turf insects. However, I highly oh, recommend that people do a pull test every single time they mow. Pause. All right, James. So I every what? time you mow, you better pull on your yard. Every time. I wonder if this guy's thinking to himself, I really don't believe anything you're saying. <laughs> I was gonna say on the flip side of that. How many people do you think in his career he's told, hey, listen, you were negative on the pool test, and those people had a genuine sigh of relief, like, oh, my God, thank, thank Jesus. 
We have Thank made you. it through the pool test. <laughs> Guys, I just noticed something. This guy literally looks like he's about to floor the ginger. I Look know. He's I, yoked. You, that dude is yoked. Yeah, no. No, he, he looks like he's, he's ready to drop the ginger because ginger is bullshitting him so many times. And you know what? I've had people tell me I am literally the first guy where if they ever tell me about a dying lawn, oh I told them, you know what? My God. Let's, let's stop right here because the first thing I want to look at is rather than go through all of this pull test and debris test, I say, hey, ma'am, uh, I want to look at your irrigation system and how it works because this may solve our mystery, not just go through 30 minutes worth of bullshit here. <laughs> oh, I, I'm guys, pretty sure I piece. We need to get that homeowner on the show. <laughs> Full debrief. Yes, we do. We need this homeowner on the show. I'm sure we need we this this man here. Thing. Yeah, There's we need this man the backyard and... like that. Piece this all together. Uh, it was kind of interesting because we went through color, pattern, water saturation, debris test. Now, obviously, through the walkthrough, you have a ton of undulations. Not shocking considering you basically just scraped everything, got it here. I take it you didn't have like a massive roller for compaction. No. Pretty simple. You also mentioned to me that you've been redoing the sprinklers, so we can see also some pitted areas due to that. Mm -hmm. um, however, here's where things got really interesting. We have the water saturation test, which tells us you actually have a significant amount of thatch only in the areas that are growing well, hmm. which is kind of interesting, right? Because you wouldn't think it would be that no, way, especially it's not in your interesting. Sock. But you I are find such a people fucking tend liar to overwater. That it makes mm. perfect sense, and yet you've created some sort of fucking nonsensical bullshit scenario of Narnia that all of a sudden you found the one instance where it's reverse. This, exactly how it's supposed to be, is actually the problem in this scenario. F go, go away, man. Go, how do we get this guy on a fucking SpaceX test flight? <laughs> right out of the atmosphere. In areas? I Which wanted, brings us on to the I debris to be test. Part of the, the, of the next time of the uh, North Korea <laughs> tests a missile, next time North Korea tests a missile, I want him to be on that missile. Okay. <laughs> probably, can't, probably can't do that. But right. what is he going to notice in the debris test here? You have a ton of debris in this lawn. No way. So, yeah. Now, no understandably, way. it's new, but there is this, a this lot guy of debris. In was, the lawn. I was going to say that was like you. Don't believe me anyway. Oh, wait, go wait, back. We need that what? one. We need that one. Go back. Go back. You have a ton of debris in this lawn. No way. Yeah, no, understandably, it's new, but there is a <laughs> lot was, of debris in this lawn. He, but again, people just ready to slit his fucking throat with this guy's yeah. thumbnail. I know. He said, you need to get the fuck out of my backyard. Get the <laughs> fuck out. Get off my lawn. I love how he's like, and I know a lot of people don't believe me when I say that. That's what I was going to say. But I'm about to pull a there. chicken liver out of your rib and convince you it's a, it's a tumor. People like you that don't believe me anyway, so let's right. just go ahead and show you. I actually brought you a, a fun little toy today called the Allet Mower, and it actually has a dethatcher attachment on it. So we're just going to run one little pass just to show you exactly what's going on in the lot. All right. <laughs> All right, James, we just ran it about uh, 12 feet. Let's see what we got. <laughs> Quite a bit of thatch. This is a lot, and, no. and here's the thing, it's just that's, dead that's debris. Nice. Very like little. 99% of this is just completely dead debris locking up the soil. So moving on locking to the pole test, the check. Fuck you! <laughs> Sorry, I'm, kids are, I probably woke them up with that. <laughs> God, Looking for lie. insects, it's really early on here in Utah. Didn't really expect to find anything. We didn't, so we're fine I'm on that. I'm trying my best to stay but calm. But to pull and it all together, leaving me. causation, your sprinklers are just screwed, man. Mm. <laughs> like, we need to figure out a better way for your sprinklers because Beginning the gray in the, the lawn suggests that we have a lot of dead debris. Yeah. It's been that way. The circles in the pattern 
also suggest, and the funny thing is, is you've marked some of these sprinklers. Some of the sprinklers are literally dead center in the dead spot, which means the sprinklers are spraying up and over those areas. Mm. But because we have a history of poor sprinklers, we need to make sure that your coverage is just spot on. So we have a ton of undulations in the lawn or pitted areas. So the best thing that we can do is just to level the, the area out. Now, since you've already stacked in a ton of topsoil, it would be wise if we get a couple of yards of topsoil to fill in the areas that have two to three inches of depth in those areas. And then we're gonna aerate the entire thing and put sand what? over it. So this may not actually seem like that big of a deal, but- And then aerate it? Mm -hmm. Who is this yep. guy? Go yep. fucking away. Get the fuck out of lawn care. <laughs> Get the fuck out of lawn care. You fucking scumbag, dirt bag, snake oil salesman. Get the fuck out of lawn care. I am so sick of hearing his bullshit between him and Ron Lemon are the two most egregious violators of just fucking crocs of shit. Alan is aware <laughs> that he's trying to sell you something. These two people are so fucking narcissistic that they can convince themselves of any level of insanity that you want to put out there. It's crazy. We've developed a situation where <laughs> we're generating mm. brown patch in an area that's underwater with no humidity. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, I'm going to run a debris test on here. Do you see all this soil lockup that's occurring because of the debris test? It's unbelievable. This is... <laughs> I wish Does he even boy believe there would put him in a fucking rear naked joke and not let go until he promised to get the fuck out of lawn care. Let's get the <laughs> fuck out. Do something else. Go sell vegan <laughs> vegan meal kits or something. Buckets of food. I don't give a shit. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. Start a church. <clears throat> no, don't do yeah. that. Oh God, don't don't start a church. I mean, Lord, I mean, start a, start a church. Fuck, get the fuck out. I don't know if you start a church, no, though, don't, like, go ahead, buddy. Don't start a church because you think he's fucking up people's lawns? Imagine him fucking up people's brains. Yikes, man. Uh, don't. If you're, <laughs> if you're positive on the pool test, you're probably going to get a cup of great Kool Aid and a death trap. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All that to say, um, this was our uh, extended cut of Jono's turf for uh, show number 100. Mm. Now, <laughs> a full experience of seeing Matt and Ray round up uh, me mostly holding my own although I, I did get mm. a little fired up here tonight too um, <laughs> what a great time to do our you know our, our uh, historical run here but real quick I just want to say thank you to everybody that uh, watches continues to watch uh, listen however you interact with the show um, this is legitimately, you know, we, we come in and we cover uh, current events. We cover uh, topics that are pertinent to the green industry, to agriculture, things like that. It's helped me stay more up uh, in tune with things like that. Um, it's helped me interact with these guys. And honestly, God, like the real reason that we do this show is that because we're so goddamn busy and because we're uh, such good friends that we have to schedule our time to talk. It just so happens that we plus record and we talk uh, twice a week. And it's great. Um, it, it is my one of my forms of therapy that I use is to get and sit and talk to these guys and get to share it with you all. So, thank you from the bottom of my heart for a hundred shows, and here's the next one hundred going forward. To the next hundred, boys. To the next hundred. One. And uh, <laughs> okay. all the listeners out there, have a shot of tequila and pretend like this never happened. And Ginger, get the <laughs> fuck out. Stop beating your oh. children and get the fuck out of lawn care. All right, y'all have a good one. But, but. but. Happy Man, Cinco de Mayo, Aldo. Just... Oh, I was trying really hard. I was like, "Well, this is going to be released. Just keep your..."